Shazam! What's the yeehaw of fishing? I don't know. I don't really know anything about fishing. I just wanted to make a fishing game. Welcome to Make Anything, I'm Devin, and today I want to share the creation of Space Fishing, my latest 3D printed game. Every year or so, my friends throw a little outdoor festival called Moonbase, where we gather to dance, play, perform, and generally enjoy the company of awesome, talented people. This year, we went with an ocean theme, and that reminded me of a little fishing game my mom used to make when I was a wee lad. It involved some styrofoam fishes with washers glued on that we could catch with a pole and string with a magnet on the end. Woo! It was a simple yet effective game, and clearly fun enough that I remember it to this day. Space fishing is essentially the same game, just updated with some 3D modeling and 3D printing so that the line can actually be cast and reeled in, which makes things a bit more exciting and challenging, even for adults. The game is still very straightforward. Lay out all the fishes on a blanket or perhaps in a small pool, and then set a timer and let the contestants duke it out to catch the most and highest value fishes. The larger fish are worth more, with crabs being the most valuable. And as with most of my games, the exact rules are kind of open-ended, so you just do what's the most fun for you. For me, the most interesting part is actually the development and prototyping. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps I took to make all of this. Let's start by taking a look at the space fishes, which have a couple of fun things going on. For one thing, these are modeled with a bunch of print-in-place hinges, and that makes them nice and floppy. If you've been in the 3D printing space for a while, you've likely seen articulated models like this before, and I was excited to finally integrate them into the project. Technically, each fish is made up of many individual parts, but they're printed all at once and designed in such a way that they won't come apart. It's a pretty neat trick that's made possible by the fact that FDM printing builds up parts layer by layer. That same fact actually makes it possible to embed these steel washers, so they're totally locked into place. To pull that off, I simply programmed my print to pause partway through so I could drop in the washer and then resume the print. The printer then extrudes over the washer to enclose it within the print. Sure, you could just glue the washers into place after printing, I forgot to embed it a few times, so I did that too. But this way, it's just way more cool and futuristic. So that's how we do it here at Make Anything. These worked out great, but maybe I was a bit too ambitious with the crab. There were some tiny intricate parts that could break off, especially when tossed from a high fishing platform, for example. So I'll probably release a version without the movable claws as well. Anyways, those are the space fishes, kind of fun in their own right, but naturally the star of this show is the fishing rod, and it did take me quite a few iterations to get things right. Here is prototype number one, which was fully 3D printed, and I like to make my designs entirely printed whenever possible, just to save you all from having to source more materials. And I also like to make the parts small enough to print on most machines. So this is actually made up of a bunch of smaller parts that all snap together, which also lets me make it very colorful. Of course, the fishing line was gonna be an exception. I haven't figured out how to print a good rope just yet. So I went with this five millimeter paracord. It's incredibly strong, very visible, and also nice and colorful, so it's ideal. Oh, and we do also need magnets so that we can actually catch our fish. So I made a lure that fits these neodymium magnets that I salvaged out of an old 3D printer. Overall, I was very happy with the appearance of this rod. Although the spool is pretty large, I had no idea how much paracord I would have to fit on it because I didn't know how far this thing would cast until I had it printed and ready to test. 
So once I did have it all assembled, I went straight outside to give it a test. And it went about as poorly as it could. The fully 3D printed spool simply introduces way too much friction to unwind freely. And I wanted this to be really smooth. So in the end, I decided it would be worth adding some metal bearings and a bolt. That made a huge difference in the smoothness of this spool. So I added the bearings and took this new version out to test and it was still pretty whack. While the spool spins, there was still enough resistance, so the lure mostly just went straight down. The underhand throw worked a little bit better, but still far from great. For my next iteration, I decided to add some extra weight to the line, hoping that it would help overcome the resistance. And I designed this capsule, similar to the lure, except it holds nickels instead of magnets. First, I tested it with a weight holding eight nickels, and while still not super satisfying, I was finally getting some real distance. From there, I tried adding a larger weight holding 12 nickels, and my lure did get a bit farther, but it was also becoming a bit of a weapon. Smack the wood and smash it open, so... Um... From there, my next move was to try out some different lengths of rope, between the lure and the weight, just to see how that affected my casting. The longer rope kind of just made things more chaotic, so a shorter rope seemed like the way to go. I also decided to go with the eight nickel weight in the end, since the difference was kind of minimal and it just seems a bit more reasonable. So iteration after iteration, I was slowly seeing improvements, but the final change that really made things work better was to increase the length of the pole from two segments to three segments. So that's roughly a 50% increase in length. I really liked the form factor of the shorter rod, but the extra control and distance I got from this longer rod sold me. It's almost like fishing rods are made this way for a reason. Hmm. So this is the version of my fishing rod that I took to Moonbase, and we had a blast fishing in space. When I came up with this game, I was just expecting to play on flat ground, but having a platform to fish off of literally elevated the experience. Anyways, I'm really proud of how this all comes together, so let's take a look at how this rod is assembled so you can make your own. Here we've got all the parts for making one rod. Lots of parts, but it's a pretty simple build. Oh, and this one, I just forgot that. The pole segments are the largest parts, with the lower one just fitting diagonally on the 300 by 250 millimeter build plate of my SV01 Pro. All the parts are designed to print easily with no supports required, and I used my various Sovol 3D printers to pump them out. PLA filament works, but I did use flexible TPU filament for some of the lures and weights since they'll be flying around and smacking the ground. For the bearings, I chose standard 608 ball bearings, but we do want to introduce as little friction as possible, so I used a needle tool to remove the covers and used WD-40 to remove most of the grease and provide some lubrication. Now, many people would argue that you should instead use alcohol followed by an oil or silicone-based lubricant and they're probably right, but this has always worked for me and it's what I did. For the fishing line, I measured out 165 inches of paracord and I'll burn the ends to keep it from fraying. You might not want to touch the molten nylon, but again, that's how I did it. We'll also want a shorter 12 inch section of cord to go between the weight and the lure. Now let's begin putting things together. I printed the rod segments with a brim for improved bed adhesion, and here I am scraping the edges with my X-Acto knife to clean that up. That's pretty satisfying. The segments connect with a dovetail joint, 
and that should be a relatively tight fit. And then these loops will snap over that to reinforce the connection. Despite printing with a brim, I hadn't noticed that this part did warp a bit. So I'll just use a 3D pen to weld the parts together and then trim that up so I can still fit the loop in place. In general, that's not a bad idea just for strengthening the rod. Next, I'll add the grip, which simply threads into place, and if you tighten it enough, it should stay in place. Now I can pop in the two bearings and this spacer. All right, spool time. This is the center of our spool and we'll feed one end of the long paracord through this hole and tie a knot. I know about as little about knots as I do about fishing, but this double loop-de knot does the trick. Just get the knot as close to the end as possible so it fits into this little pocket. And then we'll encapsulate that with the right side of the spool and this three inch long quarter 20 bolt. Then comes the left side of the spool and we'll feed all that through the spacer and bearings. It's a tight fit, so you may have to thread it into place and that should leave just enough threading to screw on this end cap that houses a nut and holds everything together. You should be able to tighten that with the spool still spinning freely. These caps are just decorative to cover the metal hardware, so you may want to glue them into place. And then we've got this knob, which has some flexing bits on the inside that connect to this ridge. So we can just pop that into place and it should spin on its own. Now we can feed the other end of the cord through these loops, pull it all through and just reel it in to get a manageable length. For the weight, we'll take the shorter paracord, tie another knot and feed that through one side. Then we'll feed the long cord through the other half and tie that off as well. We'll load up the weight with our eight nickels, which should fit fairly flush, so we can screw the halves all the way together. Finally, we'll feed the remaining loose end of the cord through the top of the lure, tie our knot, and stuff that into the center of these five magnets so it all fits in this little capsule. And now, we can catch fish. So that's what goes into constructing one of these rods. It's not exactly print and play, but I personally had a lot of fun assembling these and it's really satisfying to just get it all together. So hopefully some of you are encouraged to give it a shot. These rods worked really smoothly and it's even ambidextrous. As I mentioned, these worked quite well at Moonbase, mostly without a hitch. There were a few times that this nut got loose from the constant reeling in and out. So I would suggest a little dollop of E6000 adhesive to keep that from coming undone. There was also this pastel rod, which was printed entirely with Polyterra's matte PLA, which looks fantastic, but its layer adhesion is a bit weaker than your standard PLA filament. So the grip did end up snapping in half a few times during some especially chaotic fishing. So one solution would just be to print it with more perimeters or higher infill. But for the sake of providing a really robust solution, I designed a second version that has a hollow core and that houses an insert which is printed laying down and threaded into plate. And this end cap just hides the bottom. The layer orientation of that core lends itself to a much stronger part. Plus, we get to keep the nice matte look of this Polyterra filament. Lastly, I couldn't actually source the magnets that I used for my original lures. So I also designed a second version for these magnetic hooks that are available on Amazon. And despite being quite a bit smaller, they're actually comparable in magnetic strength. Besides that, I'll always encourage you to remix the design. So make it fit your own magnets or different weights if you don't have US nickels. Honestly, you could probably play this game with an actual fishing rod and it would be pretty awesome. So go nuts, 
have fun, do it your own way. All right, that was a kind of complicated look at a rather simple and fun game. For the time being, I'm gonna make these files available for free at my mini factory, so check out the link in the description to make it for yourself. I'll also throw together a PDF with some written instructions for assembly and basic game rules to make things as easy for you as possible. Now, developing games like this is really fun, but it also takes a lot of time and effort. So if you do get enjoyment out of my designs and are in a position to support me on Patreon or with a My Mini Factory tip, that would be super appreciated. I love making my creations available to as many people as possible, and financial support from viewers like you is what lets me keep it up. Oh, and you may be wondering how space comes into this whole space fishing game. I don't know. Thanks for watching. I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. And as always, stay inspired.